My teenage years started really when I, I started hairdressing at the age of 15, which would have been 1973. We were sort of talking about the sort of hippie period going into working towards the punk period. When I came into hairdressing, you know, in the early 70s, it was more quite hippie. It was all very casual and loose and falling, you know, down. There wasn't a lot of dressing of hair out. But then as fashion became more and more of an emphasis on image, people wanted to get it just right. They wanted to look what they, the way that people were on top of the pops. With the punks, you know, that was, you know, getting the spikes into people's hair. You didn't have the products. The people were ahead of the, the product companies. So with, with the punks, you know, you, we were learning how to use soap to make spikes stand up for the mohawks and all that there. As far as we go with the products, you know, there, there was no, there wasn't gels ready on the market. You had brill cream, you know, which was happening. I'm sure there was a few other things, but generally you had to be a bit more creative. We used to use KWAT gel, uh, again, for glossing people's hair down, for giving that look, you know, very slick. And it, it, was, it was our gel, KY gel. And then you also, with soap and water, and Lux soap was just the best for creating, you know, spikes in hair and just letting it dry in. Used to also use sugar and water and then when it set, it set the hair into place. And that, that was brilliant for the punk time. But then you went into bigger hair, you know, and then it was all about, you know, making more volume to the hair to make it bigger and fuller and the shoulder pads were coming in. And, you know, and the wind blew, you know, but the hair didn't move, you know, it was just so set. It was, you walked down the street and your clothes were flapping, but your hair stayed static. You know, it was totally an unbelievable time. You just had to experiment what could make your hair as stiff as possible. The, the, the salon on a Saturday, you would have had, you know, an age group of the, the young teenagers in, and you would have had, you know, right up to grandmothers. So you, it was not uncommon for a mohawk in one chair and for a lady getting her set in the next chair. Um, but they all gelled together, you know, very, very well. And it actually made it quite exciting. Saturday became a special day you know, because it really, really made it very, very exciting that the, the, the older people loved watching what the younger ones were doing and saying, that's ridiculous, they think that's nice, you know. Uh, but really, you know, they, they liked the fact that they were doing something outside the box, which was, was really good, you know. Uh, through my hairdressing, I started to meet all the different styles that were coming in from the punk era in the 77, you know. Uh, we then met the new romantics and then we met I must say, I was a bit of a pop tart myself because I jumped from fashion to fashion and really enjoyed doing it, but that was part of my business. I personally love all fashion because it's part of my business and I love all images, so I was always looking for the really anything that was going because I wanted to stay in touch with what was going on. Uh, we also used to go to London a lot because you couldn't get the imagery here. We found, you know, with going to London, when we were coming back, people started asking us about the clothes we were wearing. We then started getting requests when we were going to London to bring clothes back for them. And like we remember at the time, the punk era, you know, people were saying to us, you know, fellow hairdressers, you know, like, is there any chance you could bring us back a, a T-shirt by Malcolm McLaren from Saks, the shop Saks, the bottom of the Keynes Road. Saks pistols, Clash were all in then. So we used to go over and say, yeah, sure, sure. And we, we used to bring, bring the clothes back. But sometimes we seen the prices were such a ripoff because like you were looking at a t-shirt that would have cost 70 pounds, you know, in 1978, 77. And you just thought, you know, this is crazy. So we used to just start making them and tell them it was a Malcolm McLaren, you know, uh, because we were bringing them back as gifts. We weren't charging them. So we got cigarette butts and stubbed them out. We threw paint over them. We done that. We ripped them. We, you know, and we give, and they ran around as confident as can be, thinking they were wearing the Malcolm McLaren originals, you know. Um, but it also saved them money because they, we weren't, they, they were gifts from us. That, that was the start of my, my youth, you know, but I also then, the music was a big part of it for me and the fashion with being in hairdressing, but it also got me to meet all the different people who were in their fashion and in their nightlife coming into Belfast. And you had people coming, you know, from everywhere. But unfortunately, Belfast at that period didn't really have anything going on. We used to have to go down to Bangor and that would have been the Queen's Court and you would have had live bands on stage, you know, like Thin Lizzy played there and when Whiskey in the Jar was out and then you would have got, you know, different bands like Mid-Year Slick 
doing things and it all started going because we just no gigs came to Belfast at that time so we had to go because of troubles and when we finished work literally if you went to a bar in Belfast eight o'clock they, they, they closed because the security gates were up you, you, the inspector used to run into the bar and say last buses are leaving and you, you had to leave you know so there was nothing really happening at that period of time in Belfast and then it became a bit expensive, constantly going down to Bangor. So you, you ended up that you basically, you, you went, we started clubs ourselves, you know, and uh, sometimes some of the clubs were gay clubs, because that was the only place that seemed to stay open late. So we, there was like a new romantic club called Jules opened up, and then we used to run them in Royal Avenue, and they were run in uh, the Abercorn, uh, up at which was Rick's. Was, again, people had to be more inventive and start doing it, but you were, there was so little happening in Belfast, you really, really made sure that you turned up at these venues, so they were always really well attended. You know? There was a lot of people here who did not want anything to do with the Troubles. You know, you just were a normal teenager growing up. You didn't care about Protestant, Catholic, you know, you didn't care who you choose as your friends. You just went to enjoy the vibe of the place. And you know, it was the music that you were into, it was the clothes you were into, you complimented each other on the way you were looking. Uh, you made great friends out of it, and people who I still, to this day, see, and, and we still have a passion for what we, we do uh, in our jobs, and we still have, we've still kept an interest in fashion, you know, because it's a nice, light release.